Hey, Greg from Bureaucracy back here again. I have no idea why, other than that some people said I should do more of these. And uh, these people, they have very questionable taste. Anyway, I've got a couple of beers to talk about today. The first one is a homebrew that a friend of mine, Jacob Plasmeyer, dropped around. Well, actually threw in my car as I was driving down the street, to be honest. But, um, you know, what can you do? The lights were green. He was hanging on to the door. I dragged him for 3Ks and uh, thought the least I could do was taste his beer. Uh, he may be getting better out of hospital soon, I don't know. Um, anyway, hi Jacob, how are ya? Let's just uh, crack into this. Now, he did warn me that this was a New Zealand pale ale made with some very old crushed malt. So it had been sitting around crushed in whatever state for quite a while. But Jacob is a pretty damn good brewer actually. He's a, his, uh, you'll see when I pour this out, his attention to clarity for one is you know, pretty impressive. And uh, as a number of people I know say, if you can see it, you can taste it. Uh, I also know people who would disagree with that rather strongly, but there you go. And as usual, look at that. Look how clear that is. That's pretty good. So, Yeah, and I can taste the old malt. There's that sort of stale, um, I don't know, if you kind of get a I say old crystal malt, and brewers will know what I'm talking about, but nobody else will. Um, or, yeah, almost a cardboardy, oxidised note, but it's not really coming from oxidation, it's coming from possibly pre-oxidation of the malt after it's been sitting around for a long time. Uh, yeah, brewers, don't do that. Crush your malt as you're going to use it. But Jacob, I know you know that, so hey. Right, let's have a taste of this bad boy. That's interesting. And I know when people say that's interesting, they mean that's terrible that I'm not going to say it. Uh, no, it is actually quite an interesting beer. There's a, a soapiness, I'm not quite sure where that's coming from. Uh, but it's not unpleasant, it's uh, quite refreshing. Especially as uh, if you've just finished brewing, as I have, um, and you're feeling a bit knackered and you just feel like a beer, really. This is uh, it's complex, it's got some good malt, surprisingly. Um, the malt flavours I'm getting are caramel corn, but the corn part is not DMS, so don't worry Jacob, I'm not getting a DMS fault there. Um, it's just you know, almost fairground popcorn uh, type multi notes, and the hops are interesting. It reminds me of Epic Pale Ale, in fact it reminds me quite a lot of Epic Pale Ale. Uh, there's New Zealand Cascade and US Cascade often in beers over here, I, I always find throw a slightly soapy note. I'm probably alone in this, I've talked to others about it, everyone always looks at me like I'm crazy. Um, they're right, but for different reasons. The soapiness I get, it's like almost like hand hand cream, you know, it's, it's not unpleasant, it's just strange finding it in a beer, and I seem to find it in a lot of beers that have Cascade, I, who knows why. Um, but no, it's, that's quite quaffable and pretty good for something that was made with a lot of malt that was sitting around doing nothing. Ah, definitely a quaffing beer. I should have poured myself a bit less, really. I didn't think about that. Maybe what I'll do is I'll pop that one down there and I'll find another glass. Here's what I prepared earlier. And we'll move on to this which, if you can see that beautiful label, is from my good friend Martin Townsend. And if you can see the name of the beer along the top, this is one of his Brewers Reserve series. Um, the name of this beer is Blitzkrieg. And if you look, it's even got the crazy G-R-E-I-G, -E because, you know, my parents can't spell. And think that that's how you spell Greek. Now, why is that, you ask? Well, Martin, bless his cotton socks, uh, decided he was going to brew an American hopped beer. And being an Englishman of uh, some long time in New Zealand, but still still a bit of a pom, uh, he didn't really know how to use American hops. For some reason, he got it into his head that I did, and <laughs> so he rang me up. And I said, well, you know, I've got an APA recipe that I'm reasonably happy with. Um, you're welcome to it. Where you go. Good luck to you. And I talked him through my hop choices and why I'd done what I'd done and why the malt bill was as it was. And uh, he thought, yep, cool, I'll brew that. Then he told me it was for the West Coast IPA challenge. Hmm. So you have a beer that's about 6-ish six, percent hoppy, 
uh, but not extremely so, just drinkable, quaffable, a good American pale ale, up against the likes of Epic Armageddon and Halotau Stuntman. Yeah. Hmm. My heart fell a bit at that point, and uh, I said, are you sure? Are you sure that's what you want to do, Martin? Really? Yeah, 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 it'll be good, he said. So, away he went, and he brewed it. In the first year's batch, there were a few fermentation issues. Um, it didn't taste much like the beer that, that I made, but that was cool. I mean, Martin was, was figuring out how to use those hops. He rang me up again this year and said, hey, I want to do it again. I said, what, for the West Coast IPA Challenge? He says, yeah, yeah. I said, oh, okay. <laughs> but he promised me this time the fermentation would be good and he'd stick to you know, pretty much the hop bill that I originally specified. So he did. And I got to try it for the first time in Wellington, down at Biavana, and it blew my mind. It was so good. It was actually better than my original recipe, which I was really happy with. Um, it was served on hand pump. It was just really, really nice beer. Uh, my friends that were with me can testify to that. I think Kathy, well, Brendan is his real name, but yeah, he's Kathy to us. Uh, he finished it off at Little Beer Quarter. Uh, I may have come close to finishing it at Malthouse, I'm not sure. Um, anyway, that's enough prattle. Let's crack open this bad boy. Assertive, brash, and loud. A US of A amber coloured ale using American hops. I thought he was talking about me for a minute there. Anyway. Hi, Martin. I hope you're watching. Martin is uh, probably one of my favourite New Zealand brewers. He's, he's, yeah, I just love the man. Without getting all, all man lovey on it, he, he's just awesome. And he makes some of the best beer in New Zealand too. Now this is bottle conditioned. Um, and having learned my lesson though, I'll just pour myself a little bit I think. So it's a slight, it's a beautiful orange colour. There's a slight haze it's throwing, possibly from the yeast. But then it's been sitting there so it shouldn't have gotten stirred up. Nice off-white creamy head. Good lacing on the glass as I tilt it. And oh yeah, yeah. Peaches. Apricots, lemon zest, almost almost a marmalade-like note. You know, it's it's almost got that English hot marmalade, but then it just goes over the top and into the American side of things, and it's it's very citrusy. Um, yeah, just the last thing you get is lingering grapefruit, and it's just really really nice. I I love that aroma. Let's uh, crack on, shall we? Oh yeah, I mean, that's good beer. It was, you know, on, on, I was worried that uh, it was getting a bit flabby in the bottle, uh, just due to the last one I had. I thought, you know, some of the crystal malts were getting a bit old and um, it was just tasting a bit flabby, uh, a bit loose, uh, falling apart. But it might have just been the bottle I had. Uh, this is fantastic. This is crisp, bright, refreshing, zesty. Um, it's everything it was on tap. Um, just a little bit more carbonation, obviously, in the bottle than, than on the hand pump. Um, but no, this is my beer and better. Uh, well done, Mr Townsend. I could not have brewed this as good as you have. Oh, yeah. So anyway, that's about it. I hope you're not disappointed at the lack of chilli. Uh, and I hope you don't think this is horribly, horribly lame. I'm not one who likes listening to myself, and I don't like watching myself much either. Uh, so, I do like talking about beer and taking the piss, even though I seem to be struggling to find the words for any of the things I'm tasting and smelling today. But that might be just because I'm tired. Oh, speaking of which, why I'm tired, massive shout out to the good George. Uh, they looked after us last night, they had a private opening. Um, I say private, I think half of Hamilton was there. It was a, a beautiful fit out. This is Hamilton's brand new brew pub, in case anyone's wondering. Beautiful fit out. Um, the beers are simple gateway beers. Um, in time, I suspect Kelly's going to be Kelly Ryan. Um, for those of you who know him, he's going to be doing some interesting and creative things coming out of there. There was talk last night about a barrel aged double IPA and a, a I think they said a peach saison. I could be wrong. Um, so there's going to be some interesting things happening there. The beers are first generation beers, so they're going to take a little while to dial in, I think, but in general the place is amazing, um, the staff are really, really good, um, they dealt with a huge crowd and they did it really efficiently and they still made us feel like we were loved and looked after. Um, I'm the only person I didn't really get to talk too much except as he was leaving was Kelly himself, but uh, cheers to you Kelly.
thanks for what you're doing and thanks to the Phoenix Group and Brian Watson and everyone involved with it. It's looking like it's going to be a fantastic place to hang out and drink beer. Right, that's all from me. Cheers all. Bye bye.